All right. Uh, so we'll do a quick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we'll do a quick breakdown of what happened last time. Uh, <laughs> a whole lot of uh, weirdness uh, from me because of the heat. So thankfully, I'm not as hot. I'm not as hot uh, this time around, so I should be a lot more uh, mentally present. But um, so uh, for a quick breakdown, uh, last time. We started as you were all introduced to the elvish guide that would become known to you as Valeria. They'd ask uh, probing questions about what your intentions were, what brought you out into the Red Vivarium looking for sanctuary, as well as the journey that you've had. In turn, you would all ask a few questions yourselves. Uh, personal questions about Valeria, uh, but also questions about the forest and recent activities in the Enclave. After a period of travel, you'd finally reach an area that had it um, that had to it all together a different uh, feeling than the rest of the forest had had up until this point. Almost like a pressure on your shoulders that you didn't realize was there until it was finally kind of lifted. Uh, before you stood Sanctuary, a massive gathering of trees forming a dense wall. And as you approached and the way was open, it was as if everything was built in to conceal the city itself, revealed to you. Uh, a climbing array of ladders, rope paths, and steps all built into the clearing in the middle of these trees that formed the dense wooden wall to protect the city. As you made your way in, um, you were directed a few different directions based on your interests. If you were looking for armor, you would seek uh, out Aelia. Uh, Dorina, looking for grapes, was directed towards uh, Luciana, who was a local, line, uh, local wine maker. Uh, last but not least was Adrian, the sanctuary's warden and leader of the displaced people that now turned uh, towards it to be their home. Uh, directly in line of sight, Adrian, uh, it seemed, was handing out food to the masses, and so you decided to head that direction uh, to start out. He'd direct you to wait, and then in turn kind of greet you and welcome you all to sanctuary. After retiring to what appeared to be his office, he sat and kind of spoke with you all, each of you with your own inquiries. Uh, particularly a special item of healing, uh, one that may return uh, senses to one who was lost, as well as, uh, I guess, left mostly vague, but something that could help uh, reinvigorate uh, the body. And so, um, you were told or informed by Adrian uh, that the way things work within Sanctuary is that when anybody looks to clear out locations, uh, particularly locations that have been, uh, that have been corrupted uh, by the Solemn uh, Corbiano, uh, that you were entitled to whatever lies within before anybody else. Uh, so much so that they could potentially, uh, you know, you could potentially take whatever lies within all of it. Um, Although this is highly frowned upon and would likely uh, lose you any support within Sanctuary. Uh, a location with the possibility to hold such items as the ones that you were looking for happens to be uncleared, actually. And, and with purpose, um, it is uncleared because of the danger that lies within. Uh, what would have been in an, uh, an old hospital of sorts in times prior to uh, Corbiano's rise. Um, warned that whatever lay there had uh, had not been uh, cleared out particularly because of the danger it presented um, although not much detail as far as what to expect when you get there and so you accepted as a group to uh, give it a look uh, this surprised adrian but uh, very much appreciative that you would offer um, and so with that adrian had to return to kind of business as usual uh, but said that he would send a missive shortly uh, settling you all with uh, rooms for the evening uh, And so that is where we pick up let me get some music going and uh, well actually not necessarily retcon but kind of add on to that really quick um, So All right So as the five of you kind of step out of the uh, I Guess you call it like an office of sorts, right? Um, the personal kind of headquarters of uh, of the the warden's uh, personal office um as the five of you kind of step out um you'll hear like beyond the door like a quick you know like a, a a call out from adrian uh kind of bidding you all to kind of you know 
wait a second, right, kind of stop. Um, and quickly enough, uh, a few moments later, uh, stepping out kind of a bit uh, ruffled um, would be Adrian, obviously, um, who would kind of step out uh, with an array and what looked to be kind of like a folded up map uh, in his hands. Um, he would kind of uh, look around to uh, the five of you, um, kind of briefly kind of resting eyes on each one of you uh, before just kind of holding it out generally um, for whoever would uh, take it. So, um, as you would do so, you would kind of speak out for a moment. Um, this is the, uh, the best that I can offer as far as guidance. Um, one thing that was of note that I forgot to mention, uh, and, uh, you know, within all of this, I would have gotten this information to you eventually, but better to have it now before anything. Uh, the path to this location is pretty simple. Um, but it rests on a, almost like a lifted kind of cliff. Uh, and below it, um, there are ruins of long ago. I must warn you that the ruins are not to be uh, trifled with whatsoever. Uh, there's nothing there of import. It is something that you should completely keep uh, a wide berth from. There's no need to go sticking around there. It's it's fine. But uh, the the hospital, the location that you are all investigating, is um, uh, the place to be. And as he does so, he kind of opens up the map a little bit. Uh, and it's it's a very crude drawing. Uh, not very. Uh, not very well detailed. Uh, it's like the the quickest kind of uh, sketch together that someone could do, right? So it's just on the canvas map, and uh, it's like a charcoal kind of just quickly scratched into it. Um, and uh, yeah, just a, I'm not the the best of artists, but here's you know something just to kind of understand. Um, and on it, again, uh, like a child drew it, right? There's just this. Uh, what appears to be like a a rough, like sketched in cliff, um, with a, essentially like a square on top of it, and then uh, what would be like a small kind of valley underneath it, with a number of kind of squares denoting whatever would be there. Um, you know. So, uh, again, the lower area has been taken care of. I think we would try and take it, but and then also offer up. Um, I also noticed earlier that uh, your compatriots were sharing information as sort of a communications hub, and you might already be aware of it. But we 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 came into the forest, and there was a village slightly to the south and west of uh, of the entrance that uh, had been completely decimated. I don't know if word had reached you yet, but um, I at least wanted to to tell you as much, yes, yeah, as, as an offer of good faith. Mm. Yeah, the the civil war of Corbianos, uh left many scars along the land, so it is of no surprise. But uh, thank you. Um, typically, we do not venture past the forest itself, uh, only accepting those that. Uh, are able to make their way here. Uh, although we do have, as like a Valeria, or, you know, um, scouts out there that would uh, help would-be travelers, uh, ensuring their safety, at least the, the last step. Um, but uh, it's good to know that the, um, well, I guess uh, not good to know. Um, it, hmm, he kind of thinks about it for a moment. Um, Like an obvious, like a look of concern kind of crosses his face for a moment. Um, yeah, well, uh, I guess it, uh, it is coming to our borders, uh, regardless of whether we like it or not. So it will be uh, another task that must be uh, dealt with in time. So in the meantime, have there been no attempts at all to... to make contact with the with the outside merely just keeping everything inside the forest and getting your information from stragglers who, who would dare venture here 
uh, for the time being, um, the, well, currently we are hiding. This is, uh, the best that we have to offer for the moment. Uh, kind of looks around, you know, um, we do not have the numbers or the strength to face against Corbiano, and he knows these woods, um, as much as any, you know, who has been here for quite some time, so... It would not be difficult for him to track us down and annihilate us. So for now, we're just keeping things quiet. Um, we are attempting to make connections, but it's very difficult. Uh, as of right now, the only word that we have is that uh, of all the uh, various cities uh, in the Enclave, uh, only Vergon has been able to withstand the influence of uh, Kurbiano. And so that is where we look now, but uh, it is difficult uh, when you do not uh, you do not trust well. It might be worthy of a discussion for later. The uh, Vergon upon arrival seemed to be it didn't seem to be as chaotic as the 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 land side that we we traversed and if we were to to well, venture the woods and uh, perhaps eventually go back to Vergon, we could always carry carry a message along and uh, at least try and and help the community that that lives here hmm. yeah well um if you are so inclined then it would be greatly appreciated uh, currently we have a stockpile of a number of items that we just cannot uh, do much with um and we were looking to uh, hopefully set up some sort of a trade uh, route that we can potentially, you know, trade for resources and such. Um, but, uh, yeah. So currently we're just kind of in holding, looking for somebody who can uh, help facilitate that. Uh, it's uh, not a, not an easy path, uh, especially here, from here to Vergon. Um, and if the war is as close to our borders as you say it is, uh, village being destroyed then uh, can only be more difficult but uh, in any case once you are finished with your uh, task at hand uh, then maybe we can have uh, discussions if you have connections or a way to open up a trade route between the two of us Um, but certainly, he'll just chuck away and have a quick look at the drawing and then chuck it uh, away. <laughs> well, um, uh, he kind of thinks for a moment. Uh, he looks at, I'd say, uh, if you could, um, uh, Chester, give me a perception yes. check here. Let me find Chester. Right. Um, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he's busy. Uh, the warden kind of like, uh, rests eyes on Chester for a moment. Uh, and it seems like there's something he might, uh, want to say, but he kind of just stops himself and just kind of nods and then looks back to Hoot. Uh, well then, uh, Best of luck, and again, uh, feel free to uh, look around. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people here willing to help if you are in need of anything. And uh, we can uh, you know, rest for the evening, and then you can start your journey uh, tomorrow. Or, I mean, I don't know how you, how you would uh, prefer to do it, but... If anything, you have a, a, an easy... Uh, you, you have beds awaiting you, if you would wish. So, um, he would kind of uh, just kind of give like a quick nod after he kind of finishes up uh, and then uh, make his exit, kind of just uh, brushing past the group uh, and immediately kind of getting back to work in that like high, uh, fast-paced action, right? Immediately there's people kind of calling out to him, asking him about things, and he's kind of giving, uh, shouting out orders as he's kind of making his way out of the building entirely. Uh, so, the five of you. Uh, you have some time to kill. If you would wish, 
Um, or you can jump right into uh, this task at hand. Um, I know there was a few interests on various parts of this, uh, the village, I guess you can call it, really. Uh, the village itself. Um, so, what are, uh, where is the party focused at this time? Uh, well, I won't speak for Darina here, but I know Darina wanted to go talk to the uh, wine person. Yes, that's absolutely on my menu uh, before we head out. Okay. And I feel like the twins would be like, yay, wine, <laughs> if we would tag along whether Darina wants us to or not. <laughs> absolutely. All right. I know Nyx would probably be down for some wine as well. Who doesn't like good drink after a long day okay so um yeah absolutely uh, so uh finishing up with that uh dorina you have uh, your eyes set um intention to uh inquire about these uh, grapes i believe right um specifically mm -hmm. uh those of the red vivarium so um off uh, the five of you go uh you've been directed into a general area um, but if you could, uh, I'd say everybody go ahead and give me uh, perception checks here. Nice. Okay. Um, Wait, so. Doubling up as usual. Yeah, yeah, I want to. <laughs> Jesus. Dead. This has been happening way too many times. Yeah, yeah, it's been happening way too many times. Okay. It's a good it's a good thing that we always roll the same. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing. Alright. Um so uh Absolutely. So you start to uh as a group kind of making your way. Uh Dorina, you in particular kind of leading uh the rest, right? This is more of uh, something that you're particularly focused on, right? Uh you're kind of looking out for these grapes and you've been directed to a general area and so uh, while the uh, the difficulty traverse uh, kind of up the side of these massive trees, uh, the various kind of uh, rope paths, um, ladders, and um, just kind of stairs built off outside of the, uh, directly kind of onto the wood. Um, so it's not very physically taxing, but um, there's just a lot of uh, you know, kind of maneuvering, so to speak, right? Because uh, this place is essentially built in like a ring that heads uh, continues to kind of climb up the interior of this massive kind of wall of trees um, so as you're traveling around um, yeah <laughs> who just tries to herd mac and cheese absolutely um, yeah yeah absolutely who do you kind of got uh, your focus more on like you know uh, stopping uh, mac and uh, <laughs> mac and chester from uh, heading off in maybe random directions or kind of like getting lost from the group because again there's like a one quick turn right and you're completely separated uh, and so kind of keeping the group together um, I'll say that's where the majority of your perception check goes right like just kind of keeping uh, the group together is it's uh, easy to kind of get lost in the mix of it all Yep, <laughs> put child leashes. Jeez. Jesus. Um, You've got tails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Max yeah. tail, really. <laughs> Tell the reins his character equipment. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but Dorina, um, with the 21, uh, I'll say that you are uh, the first to notice. Uh, and maybe you notice, um, not visually, but uh, you can smell like the, uh, the scent of kind of mold wine uh, in the air, right? Um, and as you're kind of looking around, right, trying to uh, place uh, what the what the nose has already kind of figured out. Um, hey, you see it, a small little, essentially like a little uh, shop. Uh, there's a few, uh, there's like small little, I guess you can call them uh, tables, but, uh, you know, in another location, they might just be like a chair, or like a stool of sorts. Um, but yeah, small, just a couple of small little ones and, and some chairs to kind of go with. Uh, and the interior looks like a, yeah, like a small kind of, I guess, cafe of sorts. Um, and even on the inside, you can see these large barrels um, kind of cast into the wall that are 
pulled from directly. Uh, and standing inside, uh, who you could only assume to be uh, Luciana. So, uh, to give a description, um, let's see, I wrote this down because I'm not gonna fuck myself over like last time. So, he has facial okay. hair and. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> His facial hair and he looks like a man. Um, okay, so, uh, <laughs> Luciana has uh, short blonde hair, um, kind of like uh, in intense curls, like a, you know, uh, that kind of just hangs down to the shoulder. Um, she is broad-shouldered, um, and uh, currently uh, has a uh, kind of a barrel lifted up over, like you know, rested on to one of the shoulders. Uh, she's kind of lifting it up and placing the whole barrel. Uh, pushed into uh, one of the uh, kind of serving, uh, serving, uh, I guess you could call it like a shelf, right? Um, uh, with her, uh, currently kind of her back is uh, turned to you all. Um, but uh, the smell that emanates uh, from this shop, uh, Dorina, is uh, one that you haven't, you haven't uh, had the pleasure of kind of experiencing in quite some time uh you know the smell of an amazing wine and that is certainly kind of like what is uh just kind of wafting out of this uh this small little uh cafe well what a what a beautiful little place uh shall we head inside i would uh say to the others yeah Let's get absolutely drunk. This is a great way to start our adventure. She would just nod excitedly. Okay. This is very, uh... It has a very mischievous look that would probably make Hoot feel extremely concerned. That Drina is not picked up on. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. Oh. Um... Yeah, <laughs> it's clippy. Um... So, uh, you start to make your kind of way inside, and as you enter in, there's not any other customers, right? So it's just literally you, um, in this, like, open face to the, uh, small cafe, um, uh, that you can just walk right in. There's no door or anything along those lines. Um, so, as you kind of step in, uh, standing behind, uh, kind of looking to serve, uh, as the five of you kind of make noise, right? Just general chatter as you, uh, enter in, uh, Luciano will kind of turn and, uh, look to you all. Uh, and as you can see, she's, um, now that you see her face, uh, directly, as she turns, she has, uh, she has, um, kind of piercing blue eyes, uh, and as she kind of turns and gives you all, like, a once-over as you enter in, um, it seems her eyes rest directly on, uh, Dorina, um, kind of, uh, leans back for a moment. How can I uh, help you all? We have uh, three uh, ages on uh, well, for sale. Um, but if you are new, uh, which you seem to be, kind of looking past me, well, the first one is uh, on me. So, what would you like? Mm, I would appreciate to taste all of them today. <laughs> I've come a long way just to appreciate the wines of this of this region. Really? You are uh, absolutely. And I would give her a very inviting smile. Mm. Just kind of lean forward. Uh, you are uh, passionate about this wines. I mean, I think wines are to die for. Mm. Me as well. Uh, well, um, then I think uh, this is what you are looking for. As you kind of turn and uh, quickly pour uh, from one of these smaller, um, actually I would say the smallest uh, kind of uh, cask that is uh, um, on display. Um, and she pours a small amount into a small, uh, small, like actual uh, kind of glass uh 
and then offers it over to you. Um, this is, well, uh, my personal favorite, and also, I think, um, my best. Uh, for the rest of you all, um, almost rudely, right? Uh, this will probably do. Uh, and then she just takes from the largest cask, right? And, uh, puts the wine, it's like a mold wine into, um, <laughs> into essentially like wooden cups, right? Completely opposite to, uh, the experience that Dorina is having, right? Um, we'll just kind of fill up four real quick and, uh, place them down. These are the free drinks. Uh, so. Enjoy. Uh, they're good too, but, you know. Uh. Jester so. just like downs his immediately. Yeah, you just take it. <laughs> no just, respect yeah. whatsoever. Absolutely. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a mold wine. It's good. Um, you know, if you like mold wine, right? Um, it's good, but it's not. Uh, Great. It's yeah, it's not the the best, right? It's it's a uh, it's the kind of wine you drink when you want to drink a lot of wine, right? Mm, um, yeah, it could have been aged more in. I, I think an oak barrel. I did take hints of cedar, but. Mm. Uh, perhaps yeah, oak should have been better. Yeah, maybe. And she just kind of brushes off your opinion like it doesn't matter. Um, and then kind of turns and looks to you, uh, Dorina. Um, as you, uh, <laughs> um, as you, as you, uh, kind of, uh, well, do you take a sip, actually? Or how, how does Dorina, um, partake? I know you, uh, you did some reading on this. <laughs> Oh dear, but it's it's a long Shots ago. It down. Yeah. So yeah, she would <laughs> she would swirl it around, of course, in the glass to let some air get to the wine, and really just inhale it before taking a very um, elaborate sip from it. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so you just take a sip. Um, immediately, what hits um, is uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go full wine connoisseur. Here. No. Um, Essentially, the, uh, yeah, as you drink it back, um, it has, uh, a very grape-forward, uh, flavor, um, but, uh, this is not a grape that you've ever, you know, you've had many wines, right? You've had the best, you've had the worst, um, you've kind of partook in the full range, um, mm -hmm. immediately, uh, this is something new, something different. Um, I would say you could probably be up to your yourself to kind of play out exactly how much you enjoy this. Um, but this is very, very, uh, different. The, the experience is completely, uh, different than what you've, uh, what you've had in the past. Um, but immediately there are, uh, like, uh, you know, like the, the taste of, uh, vanilla, um, you know, a number of spices in there. Um, and this tastes like it's been aged very well. Uh, it immediately kind of gives you, uh, almost like a, uh, almost like a, a bitter reaction, but in like the best of ways. Um, mm. so. so her eyes would just like grow wide open and almost start shining. And she would say, like, the palette is truly fascinating. This is unlike anything I've had before. Um, I know this is rude to ask, but is there perhaps more of this? Uh, she kind of uh, squints her eyes at you. Um, yeah, it could be. Um... Yeah, um, sure, and she'll take the, the glass and kind of turn it back to you and, uh, you know, kind of quickly fill it up again, um, each, each, uh, like, glass full, because, uh, to, to describe how small this glass is, uh, it being full is basically like a, like a, a half sip, or, sorry, like a half, Port. like a half mouthful, right, like, you know, like, just a, just a little bit. Um, so she'll kind of, uh, quickly kind of put one together and then, uh, turn back and, uh, hand the glass over again. Um. Oh, um, excuse me, perhaps I, 
I spoke not precisely enough. Uh, what I meant is, you see, I live far away and was wondering if you exported this wonderful product. Ah, you want to take some with you? Um, hmm. What are you offering? Because this is quite rare. I mean, the grapes uh, can only be found in the, the forest around here. Um, and as you know, you've traversed the forest itself. I can only assume that you know the dangers that exist out here, so... Um, each barrel, even one such as small as this, kind of like, you know, uh, motioning back uh, towards the one that is on display. Uh, to me, has a personal value that is quite... Quite high. But... I understand that you enjoy wine, so... I agree that it is all about the personal value, which is why I brought some some of the wine coming from my own house. Um, what I was thinking is that perhaps we could exchange some every, uh, every now and then, just to offer more in our respective places. And I would hand her my bottle now. Okay. Um, yeah, she'll take the bottle and kind of like really uh, look it over, um, kind of studying it. Uh, kind of looks to you, uh, looks from you to the bottle, and then... Uh, you made this? Well, it was my mother, but... We make it together at times, and I plan on joining the business. I see. Where are you from? And that would be Thanaeus. Thanaeus. I'm sure you can taste the sunbathed uh, grapes immediately. It's been some time since I've had anything uh, from Thanet. You didn't, by chance, come with any cheese, did you? I'm, I'm afraid not. Oh, we have Just cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as the, uh, yeah, as the, uh, the twins in the back. Um, you've had one drink, you know, you know, maybe. Uh, we downed it in like two seconds. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's hitting us after five minutes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. This kind of catches him off. You say that this is, is a you say this in character, right? I'm not. Yes. Okay, yes. Right. Yes. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You've got cheese. Oh, uh, wow, that'd be great. Um, I have a few things as well. So, um, if you could, then uh, maybe we can make a trade here. I can uh, offer a bit of my wares. You can offer a bit of the uh, the, the nan cheese you've on um, you've brought with you. Um, there must have been some confusion. Because it's me, and he like drape himself along the counter. <laughs> like my name is Cheese. Oh, Dorina would cover her face, going completely <laughs> red. <laughs> Your name is Cheese. That's right. Hmm. So, what are you going to trade us for him? I'm very expensive. <sighs> Happy to get rid of him. <laughs> He's priceless, really. <laughs> In both ways, I would assume. Um, hmm. She kind of takes a look at the bottle again. Uh, she's still kind of holding <laughs> it out in her hands, uh, looking uh, at Dorina. Um, Please taste it. You, you are welcome. It is a gift from me to you, after all. Okay. Um, yeah, she'll... Before she does, she kind of looks around. Um, another drink, perhaps? Um, looking at cheese. Yes. Hmm. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Quickly kind of fill up, uh, well, retrieve the glass from you, the, the same kind of wooden cup, uh, just kind of fill it up with the same mulled wine and uh, pass it over. Um. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as soon as you get it, it's, it's back and gone. Yeah. Yep, yeah. It's great. Not even enjoying she's it. She's really I mean. helping, uh, Jarena here. Yeah. You you hear like uh you hear Luciana kinda of say a few words to herself, like not even enjoying it, like just it, it, remarking on how fast you're just kind of uh, chugging it back. Um kind of shakes her head. Uh I have a few things um I at least can offer. So she'll kind of reach down, uh basically like behind uh 
this bar, I guess you could call it, um, and pull out a few uh, small rations, um, and uh, kind of make like a a, a pseudo kind of a charcuterie board, right? Um, just a, a few slices of thin meat, um, some kind of hard tack, uh, and then uh, some pretty plain, but um, not that bad considering uh, the circumstances here. Uh, cheese. So. Hmm. Then she'll kind of get back to that bottle that uh, Dorina has offered. And uh, finally kind of uh, pop it open. Um, and then we'll uh, pull out two larger uh, glass cups. Um, and pour out two fairly uh, considerable uh, uh, cupfuls um, and offer one to Dorina. Um, it's only I right. Would, I would take it then. Uh, and then she'll do the whole wine snob shit where she lifts it up and, you know, kind of spins it and smells it and whatever. Um, all the while kind of giving you uh, like looks of surprise, right? Mm, uh, Dorina would be like almost almost like eerily dead focused on her while she's tasting it. Okay, okay. Um, it's yes. like she's paying attention to every movement in an eyebrow and such things. <laughs> um, before she even takes a sip, she just kind of comments um it is, um... Uh, it has been some time since I've had something, uh, this uh, well-crafted. Um, thank you. Uh, what is your name again? Oh, it is uh, Dorina Serlin, and hearing that truly warms my heart. Uh, I'm gonna spin it again, and then, uh, oddly enough, um... Drinks it back the same way that Chester has been drinking. Um, it's a it's a considerable amount, right? It's more than you know. Uh, it's a good amount of wine in this cup. It's a, this is a tall kind of uh, rounded uh, glass. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Luciano would just kind of tilt it back, and then just you know without stopping, just drink it all. Um, and yeah, she kind of does, she'll set it down and kind of really uh, uh, take a few moments, right? Uh, and then look to uh, Dorina. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, just as I thought, uh, you are quite. You're quite uh, skilled in uh, your uh, making of wine. Um, for this bottle, I can I can offer you at least uh, a similar amount, uh, a bottle myself, of uh, what I have as a fair mm. trade. Well, that seems truly fantastic to me. See... I was wondering if perhaps in the future uh, we could send a courier to buy to bring more of our own and, you know, turn this into a regular thing. Oh, um, given the current circumstances, I am, well, I'm certainly open to the idea, but um, I'm not sure how long I'll be here. Fair enough. And we shall see about it in the future. Yeah. I would love to, you know, give you a, uh, a for certain answer, but uh, given how things have progressed lately, um, at least what I've heard, uh, things are not not well outside the the borders of the, the forest. So. Not sure how long I have. 
But that is a fair concern, I suppose. But in the meantime, um, sure. Uh, and uh, she will reach out and uh, grab a bottle. Um, it is kind of masterfully uh, sealed, uh, looks perfect. Um, she will offer it out uh, towards you, to, you know. A beautiful example. And mm. I would take it and place it inside of my bag. In the meantime, could Hoots try and use his water skin to fill up the cup and place that in front of Chistar? <laughs> you wanna... Here, another. Yeah. Uh, but just water. <laughs> Um, so, who do you trying to sober up Chester? Yes. Because I, I have a feeling this is going to go bad from, from earlier experiences. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So. What's happening, Chester? Uh, Chester's just having a great time. He's just fooling around with Mac. Uh, as we just touch everything in the room. <laughs> uh, oh, as you touch everything in the room? Okay. Uh, yeah, as you look around, like... yeah, there's not much. It's a lot of chairs and a lot of uh, little small tables, but, uh, you know, there's not much for, like, display purposes. Um, yeah. The stuff to mess around with is behind the bar, but Lujan is behind the bar as well, so. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that's uh, something you would attend. Yeah, no, they're just, they're just having a, yeah, a good great time. time. Right. We find you know, the one have... table that has like an uneven leg and we're just like rocking it constantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Alright. <laughs> Luciana kind of gives a look. Uh, could you stop, please? Um, it's... it's an uneven leg. Um, just an apologetic, uh, apologetic look from, from who Twali takes the wooden cup over and, and sets it in front of Chester. And yeah, to have, have something to drink. Yeah, Chester drinks it. He doesn't notice the difference, honestly. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like mission successful. The same way, right? <laughs> thinking it's yeah. thinking it could potentially be more. Uh, you just, yeah, yeah. drink it back. You yeah, just exactly. chug down a cup of water. Yeah. Um, well, uh, so, uh, how long have you been? Um, she, this is now kind of less focused on Trina, kind of asking around, um, you know, kind of eyes, kind of, uh, talking to you all as a group. Uh, how long have you, uh, been, uh, in Sanctuary? I assume, um, I tend to see most people that have, uh, come through here, so, uh, I assume you've only just arrived, uh, recently, if not potentially last night, and... An hour and a half. Mm. What uh? What brings you out this way? I mean, I, I cannot. I cannot assume it is simply for wine, right? We heard there were a lot of really good women around here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you single, Luciana? Um. She gets a little like uh uncomfortable um uh you can see she's like stumbling over what to say in response um i know nope. we always we're, everyone's at a loss for words when we talk to them what yeah. did I tell you to? You you don't go up like that to everyone and ask them they're single. Just just just, just, just ease into it. We we've talked about these rules of conversation before. You're just mad because we found out you don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> yes, I'm very mad. Yes, very upset. Um, she kind of just speak out. Uh, uh, if you must know, um. I am, uh, but not a, uh, given the circumstances is not, not something deeply important to me at the moment. Well, so love finds always, a way. There's always time for love. 
<laughs> just to like hug Mac. Mm. Well, and then is immediately distracted by the table again. Yeah, immediately distracted. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, just like forgets the conversation. Uh, turning and looking at uh, Nick. Uh, what about you? What is uh, what has brought you out to uh, this part? Well, I've been trying to you know, help people get places safely and uh, maybe bring some stuff bring some souvenirs back myself I'm nice. not too much into wine it's very you know, I don't have the tongue to appreciate it kind of like uh, yeah. kind of respectfully not it's like understanding um, so you are a, a treasure hunter just looking for yeah treasure people who want to leave you know oh you are a all smuggler. kinds of different things hmm. that term tends to get you killed in the wrong crowds probably not any here but uh I understand um yeah here people would have uh, great need of a, a person who knows how to get past the, you know, the various uh, situations and uh, troubles that might uh, disturb, you know, uh, resources and stuff of like that. So, um, if you are intending to leave the continent, well, we'll be around. Um. She kind of stops and thinks. Um, you can you can tell that she's really thinking about your words, right? Um, you are intended of leaving the continent, right? Um, almost like it was something that hadn't really crossed uh, her mind previously, and now it's like, oh wait, like I can leave, right? Um, uh, and she just kind of like deeply considers a word. If you'd like, um, I've given you the uh, maximum uh, free drinks that I can, but uh, if you have something for trade or uh, could uh, pay, um, would you like more? Or uh, what is your... Uh, have you gotten what you uh, came here for, looking to Dorina? I do believe that would be all. Um, although, please inform me if you would like to be paid for the wine you've given us so far. No, no, that's fine. That's not much. It's the, the mold wine. It's the, the simple stuff. Um, okay. Um, well, then it was uh, great to meet you. Um, not often one uh, comes across another uh, wine connoisseur as yourself. Um, and while you are here in Sanctuary, if, uh, if there's anything that I can be of service with, then, uh, don't hesitate to ask. It was my honor and pleasure to meet you. Hmm. It, uh, it might be a bit more brutish, um, and not really concerning wine, but do you happen to have any, uh, perhaps, failed experiments that, that tend to be on the high proof side of things. We've noticed that the forest-dwelling creatures are rather intimidating, and, and I was thinking that perhaps if, with something with uh, an alcohol content that would be high enough that uh, perhaps that could be used as uh, a detergent, so to speak. Mm. Um... Um... Hmm... She thinking this over and is looking at um you can see that she keeps kind of looking uh through the group. Um but uh her eyes seem to kind of stop on 
Dorina a number of times, right? Like, um, almost like she's thinking for Dorina. Um, uh, I have a, a small amount of stuff that I could probably help you with. Um, uh, not, not so much failed experiments, but uh, stuff that I have uh, been making for the, uh, the the group here. Um, so. Well, it would be less to to really drink and uh, perhaps more to um, something that would be highly flammable, more towards that end. Yeah, um, she pull out a very small, uh, cask, right? Like, uh, probably like five liters, right? Um, max. Um, here, uh, this is all I can offer because this all the, this goes towards everybody else, but, um, This is about as much as I can offer. Use it uh, well. Um, there are some creatures that are... I should, I should warn you that there are some creatures uh, that are... I have the opposite effect with uh, with fire. So. Um, that is indeed quite vibrant information. Thank you very much. But um, but you are right. A number of them are would, would certainly be uh, frightened away by uh, such material. So all right. Um, so she'll offer it, and uh, yeah, you can kind of take the uh, cask right and. Uh, Then it is good to see you, and uh, well, good to meet you, and uh, ideally we'll uh, maybe we'll see each other uh, in the future. Best of luck. Um, he will try to shove his boot underneath the table to make it stop creaking, and then be like, uh, "Yes, it was a pleasure to meet you, and um, I'm sure with the company we keep, we will." Uh, Likely meet again, and then try and get just the, the mac and cheese out. Fair enough. Start to to push the twins out of the out of the the small kind of cafe of sorts, right? Um. All right. And I'm sure they're whining the entire time they're being shoved. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just had wine. Stop your whining. <laughs> Dorina would kind of, you know, do a polite bow, trying to cover the whining twins uh, from from her sight for now, uh, before leaving as well. All right. Nix would kind of leave with the final word of, if you want to, you do intend on leaving, we'll be in Vergon at some point in the next coming weeks. Kind of oh. leave quietly after that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, again, like, kind of reaffirming that, uh, sh she could potentially leave, uh, uh, it, it really seems to, even without, like, having to make a perception, it really seems to hit, uh, pretty close, um, and she'll just kind of, like, you know, softly nod and kind of go quiet and uh, kind of get a look, like, you know, and she's not there at the moment, right, like, you know, thinking... She's lost in thought. Uh, but so, um, you make your way out. And so the five of you, uh, having completed the uh, business with the uh, winemaker. Um, what else? There was uh, an armor thing going on. And then... Uh, or is it just... Let's get down to business. What time of the day is it? Um, so it is... Uh, it's, you probably have, you know, three or four hours of sunlight left. And how far away is the place we're going? Uh, it's not very far at all. Yeah. Uh, you could potentially yeah. get there um, before sundown if you had left 
like if you leave like right away but uh but then we have on, to travel back during yeah depending on how right. long it takes to clear it out and then to travel back um most likely you'd be back uh in the evening right well no like literally you would be back in the evening yeah because i would say to get there and then back alone like if you just went saw it and then turned around uh by the time you got back it would be evening so So, what direction? Alright. I don't think Nyx has anything for the armor. Yeah. Can't really afford it or doesn't really need it. Yeah, it wouldn't be m much of getting to the specialty armor, just more of a general good thing, seeing if we're good on general goods and wanting some like basic materials and. Mm. Uh, what kind of basic materials would we be looking for? Because if it's something that's um, a bit simpler, then um, we can just kind of handle it uh, without yeah, having to. Um, yeah. Some basic uh, wood, uh, fabric, and caltrops. Okay. Uh, wood, fabric, and caltrops. Um, sure. What are you uh, looking to put together? Boot. Uh, the wood and fabric will likely come uh, just be something later on i don't really know yet oh, okay. uh, gonna... and, but the caltrops would be uh for uh if we like find ourselves in inside a corridor again fair enough okay um so uh is that something um three silver pieces three silver pieces yeah i'd say you could easily find something along those lines uh and then as far as like the hmm uh some wood and fabric uh we'll just say it's like one silver piece for however much you need of both uh, assuming like in a you know uh, assuming in a reasonable <laughs> amount right uh yeah it's it's uh, like a, like a, a spool of fabric maybe and and uh, uh anything salvageable wood wise uh, uh that's like it's not even the size of the background yeah fair enough yeah if you got the silver fort then um we'll just assume that looking around yeah. uh, the city um ensuring that everything is all right um then that uh yeah, that uh, all would be well. You'd be able to find uh, any of these items, so uh, feel free to add that to your inventory. Um, so, uh, I guess then, uh, is the goal, now that that's kind of uh, taken care of, um, is the goal to head out and risk returning in the dark, or uh, is the no, goal first, to... First uh, thing in the morning. First yeah, thing in the morning. So, uh, mm -hmm. Mac and Chester would probably figure out however that ends up working. They don't have to play it out, but where they're staying, and then, like, you know, make fun of Tarina some more, but bringing them back to our shared room. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus, are you... Yeah, you're, you're going for it? Um, no! Okay. But, or <laughs> or, <laughs> or we could add, um, also ask Tarina um, if she wants the room to herself and Luciana. <laughs> oh. yeah, Jester would definitely be like, are you single, Tarina? Because... You know, she seemed really into you. I I believe she was into me more on a on a winemaker's level, you know. Sometimes that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> uh, so, um, as promised, um, a, a small. A uh, young-looking messenger will kind of, uh, very obviously kind of head on a swivel, kind of looking out, uh, will kind of come running up, um, uh, particularly to Hoot. Um, uh, uh, the warden has, um, 
suggested that I uh, lead you all to uh, your rooms for the evening. Very well. Um, lead the way. All right. Um, uh, yeah, and this uh, younger uh, human, um, young human kind of boy, uh, can't be older than 14. Um, just kind of like uh, quickly turns and looks to uh, lead the way back. You can tell um, the, the clothing that uh, he's wearing is uh, not in the best of states, right? Uh, very much, uh, you know, if you look around, there's a clear kind of difference between uh, the, the people that have made their way to Sanctuary. Uh, many of them are very obviously displaced, right? Um, seems like, you know, what they would have had is just whatever they were able to get out of uh, their situation with. Um, and much of that, you know, having been ruined in the journey to get here. Um, while others seem to have a bit more of a... Uh, Kind of like a naturalistic uh, clothing going on, right? Much of uh, what's commonly found in the woods here, right? Uh, turned to make into kind of clothing. Um, and uh, well, uh, well crafted as well. Um, so the, these people that have it uh, look uh, very, you know, um, they don't look like wild people roughing it in the woods. Like they look like a very well presented, um, you know, assuming like they would be, uh, kind of heralds of, uh, some sort of woodland kind of realm, uh, so that there's a, a juxtaposition there, which is a little weird, right? Um, from those who have been here for a while and those who are just arriving, um, and so the young boy being, you know, one of the presumed recent arrivals, uh, just kind of, uh, We'll quickly lead the way um, to uh, a small. Uh, this will be on the ground floor, so it'll be all the way back down onto uh, uh, the dirt, um, and lead you to uh, kind of what looks to be like a like a tavern of sorts. Um, there are a number of people inside, kind of drinking, uh, sitting around, um, but this is very, very traditional tavern, right? Um, Nothing about it is too fancy. Um, and the young boy will say, uh, Adrian has um, secured that uh, there are five rooms here, so one for each of you, if you wish. Um, each one has a bed and uh, whatever else you may need um, to handle your business for the evening. Uh, and uh, he says, um, uh, he's kind of like trying to think about it, right? Kind of, uh, what did he say? Um, to enjoy your uh, stay and uh, best of luck in your uh, journey task tomorrow. And uh, the food and drink is uh, free for you. Thank you very much for, for bringing us here. And who will hold out a um, silver piece. I, I don't know much if currency is, is used in Sanctuary, but... Um, Perhaps you, uh, you can, uh, it can be something offered as trade. Um, the, the kid is kind of like taken aback, uh, kind of looks at the silver coin, uh, just kind of shakes his head quickly, like, yes. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, yes, I can, uh, potentially I can trade. Um, thank you. Uh, just kind of, uh, takes it from your hand, and then we'll just kind of skitter off, right? Just, you know, rushing away. So. Let's see. Okay. Um. So the five of you, uh, you rest a bit. Um, you... I assume partake in, you know, whatever food and drink that you would like, uh, for the evening, right? Just kind of having uh, a good time with it, um, if you do wish to, and then if not, then it doesn't matter, um, before, uh, how are sleeping arrangements here? Um, I assume Mac and Chester are going to take a room to themselves for sure, right? Um, 
even though you could each have your own room. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely staying in the same room. <laughs> okay. All right. So Mac and Mac and uh, Cheese are in the same room, and then everybody else just gets their own. Um, beyond that. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So yeah. The uh, five of you all rest up. Uh, the twins. Um. Uh. I guess I would say at the prospect of actually finding something that may help with your current condition, Chester, is there anything that Chester would share with Mac on the eve of uh, potentially, you know, procuring something that can, you know, you know, have some sort of uh, effect on what you've been going through? Uh, I feel like Chester would definitely approach Mac. Just kind of be like, it seems Dorina is looking for something similar. Yeah, something about taste, though. Yeah. But it could end up being the same item. Even if we're and... using it for different things. And what if it is? Well, we'll just have to see who needs it more. Obviously you. Yes. What's his face didn't seem like it sounded like a permanent solution, though. Well, I'm not sure how much they actually know about all this stuff. Either. Well, didn't he also say that there might be something? It's not actually, like, a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Well, I say if we don't find anything, we should probably go to those ruins he said not to go into. Yeah, Scary I was acting really suspicious, suspicious about it. Yes, exactly. Anytime anyone acts suspicious, it's always because it's the truth. Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to hide something from us. Mm-hmm. I think during the night, well, during the initial stay, I think Hoot would uh, go to the twins' room. Probably get the wrong room at first, where no one is staying, and then get to the yeah, other room. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, assuming, right, oh, this should, this should be one of them, and yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't know, actually do the polite thing and knock. There's a knock as soon as we finish that line. Maybe it's Serena coming to sleep with you, Mac. She's finally found the error of her ways. It's about time she wised up. And then Mac's just gonna, like, throw open the door. <laughs> and there sounds Hoot. Oh, he's gonna look immediately, like, just disappointed. <laughs> well, there's no need to, to look so disappointed. What do you want? And he'll just walk in with a certain familiarity and sit himself down at the table. And, well, I was just wondering. And, like, it's been a while since I've really seen you two. You've really grown up. And what did I overheard here earlier about what you were looking for? And some some elixir to to fix something? Has anything gone wrong? Well, you see. The truth is, Hoot. No, we... the fourth brother doesn't exist. I already know that. The fifth brother of ours. He he transformed into a unicorn dragon and stabbed me right in the stomach, and I died and bled all over the floor, and there was blood everywhere. And it was very tragic, and now I'm cursed forever. And the fifth brother stabbed you in the stomach. Is, I mean, is there insight in there? Uh, there wasn't insight, right? <laughs> um, uh, the way... I think we are not way, telling the truth, but you can tell there's a hint of truth to it. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if he, uh, because he's known you previously, if he knows which parts would be more, that he knows, like, the cannons in your voice, or, like, there's a certain tell that he's aware of that would hint to what the, what it actually yeah. is. I mean, you know that we do not have any other brothers. Yes. First of all, yeah. And a dragon sounds that. ridiculous. Yeah, there's, okay, there's like... no dragons. They don't exist. Okay, and then he's just gonna call on it and be like, okay, so... It's a stabbing of the stomach. Hmm. And who have you two got? You got stabbed in the stomach. Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm sure it's happened to you a couple of times too. Um, I'm and Max sure. gonna like make sure the door is closed. <laughs> sure, of course. I caught a couple of open. stabbings. Uh, Chester's actually gonna lift up his shirt, <laughs> like, and actually prove it. See, uh, oh. that's actually quite a grisly, uh, not healthy-looking wound. Probably, the flesh is all yeah. necrotizing and. Rotted. Just to make sure Hood would, would move up a bit closer and to, to just point his finger towards this as if to see that it's not something from a disguise kit. <laughs> uh, Chester actually kind of steps back a bit, but not in a way that he doesn't want you to find out the disguise, but because uh, you can tell it's, it's real. Hmm. So there is something that actually happened to you two in the, uh, in the time that that you were away. Well, I always knew that you, you guys were kind of would get in trouble, but this is quite a bit of trouble. Hoot. Yes. You like us, right? I guess you could could say that, yes. I, I have a certain, certain fondness of you two. I've known you from way back, and yeah, yes. Well, I wasn't dying with the... Or, I wasn't lying with the dying part. So you're saying you're actually dying? Uh, well... Well, aren't we all, really, of course. Technically, I already died. Duh, past tense? You see... You Mac, died. Mac, with the power of brotherly love, he leaned over me and cried magical tears that brought me back. Chester's lying about this part. Mm. It's true. It was. It was all because of my love. Yes, you know. Uh, Golden some... tears fell from my eyes right onto Chester's wound, and he came right back to life. Sometimes it's I so think tragic. you two should really write an epic novel about this. There's probably a, a few people that would be interested in these stories of yours, but and I, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit con concerned. I, and as we're going out, most likely to find an artifact, and we also have someone else with us that is looking for perhaps something similar in a restorative nature. Um, I just wanted to, to, to see how, how much uh, was actually true of the story this time. What do you mean, this time? Every story is true. <laughs> well, yes, of course. That's why we found the fifth cousin and the eighth third brother removed uh, years ago. It's all true in your minds, but in reality, I'm speaking from the reality. Well, even if you don't believe our tragic story of sadness and love, uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to last. <laughs> Our body's not holding together well, and we need to find something else to keep it here. So there is actually a certain immediacy to it, which is kind of explains why. No, uh, at first I thought it was kind of on key for you two to throw yourself at long as a danger, but this would explain why you've been all wanting to do it with an extra pep, so to speak. 
Yeah, we've... We heard rumors, and this is the best place as any. But you know, uh, necromancy is, is very frowned upon Hoot, so if you talk about this any with anyone, you're going to end up the same way as me. I love you, but oh, I don't love you that much. I, I, I've been, been killing folks before you were born, so don't talk about necromancy to me like that. It'll be fine, but if there is an actual need to 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 get you restored, and there is, and it is getting worrisome, I'm I am. Um, it's kind of funny that I'm admitting it to you too, but I'm trying to turn over a new leaf, and I do want to help people instead of of hurt them. So I I I will support you too in in finding this item and getting this fixed. You've, you've, we've picked the best people to help. Oh yeah, clearly, because your father is definitely not going to do it. Well, I mean, he he can't. He's dead. So. No, last time I saw him, he he was still very much alive, and he still owed me fifty gold. Oh, you're not gonna see that. No, no, probably not. Uh, but yeah, but he he was alive. But I doubt that he would, would do anything. But uh, uh, I guess I'll uh, I'll try to uh, to to be the, the 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 uncle. I guess I was supposed to be many years back. Thank you. Uh, just was a bit genuine for like a very brief moment. Before going back to being stupid. Yeah, and then with with the the cadence changing to to the stupid again, Hoot will just get up and be like, "Okay, I I know all I need to know," and just be like, "Okay, sleep well. We'll set out in the morning. We'll, uh, uh, you can make some trouble in the tavern. It'll be fine. And they won't kick it out straight away. At least I don't think so. Don't don't make it too bad." We just give no promises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to his room and uh, yeah, props a chair up to the door and tries to go to sleep. <laughs> you prop a chair up to the door? Uh, yes. He's preventing us from getting in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the line, right? Um, <laughs> what's up? Uh, mm-hmm. we're good. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, following the conversation, right, uh, everybody, uh, makes time, you know, to themselves and, uh, rest the, uh, the rest of the evening away, and, uh, before long, the, the following days come. Uh, and so, as each one of you kind of awakens, uh, in your own time, uh, plan is probably to meet in the the tavern itself right so um whoever's up first would just kind of you know make their way you know find a table uh kind of call dibs on it maybe get some food going um so that when the others uh, arrive there's something ready at the table for them uh and so you know one by one um or rather you know i guess the twins would probably come out uh, as a group but um one by one uh except for the twins um you all kind of come out and uh partake in uh, what you would like for um, breakfast, which, again, not not much on offer, but at the very least it is hearty enough to just kind of you know, fill the stomachs and ensure that you won't go hungry. Um, it is, uh, I guess, after seeing it a couple of times, um, yeah, it's apparent that uh, resources here, although not in the worst of... Uh, place at the moment um seems to be dwindling uh and it's probably because their lack of uh access to the outside world or uh fear that if they are to reach out that you know uh they will be found out and annihilated so because of all that um yeah it just kind of becomes a bit apparent after some time so kind of finish up your meals and uh is there anything 
uh, said to each other uh, before you continue as you're all kind of partaking in breakfast? Uh, do you share any information? Do you, you know, kind of speak to each other about anything um, before you head on out? I think it would uh, just sit at the table and just mull over the information he got from last evening and try to fit the pieces together. Alright. So. Um, Alright then, well. Uh, you all, you know, have what, what you would wish for uh, breakfast and then you start to make your way on out. Uh, standing near is the uh, exit, uh, almost kind of on watch, uh, is none other than the guide, uh, Laria, who brought you all, uh, into the city. Uh, and as you approach, um, they'll just kind of look up, uh, uh leaving already. I'll be back. I see. We've been uh, we've been tasked to uh, well tasked maybe a strong words to to go on a lookout of a mission that has been planned uh, for for a while, but there weren't enough resources for. Gives a confused it's, look. Uh, it's actually quite fortunate that we that we see you now, because uh, uh, and he uh, kind of uh, straight. Uh, uh, brushes his hands over the ghillie cloak that he got mm -hmm. and uh, uh, reaches in his pouch. I, I don't know if you know much about this and I don't know um, if a lot of people would get this here, but I actually have a uh, disguise kit. I, I, I was able to spot you and with the disguise kit, if you learn how to use it, you might actually blend in a bit more and do your scouting a bit more effectively. Uh, reach their hand out. Uh, well, I appreciate that then. Are you kind enough to 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 offer a uh, stranger uh, <laughs> something much appreciated? So I, I I think I could only return the favor. Hmm. Um, should kind of uh, they'll kind of accept it from you. Um. Uh, thank you. What, uh, what exactly has uh, Adrian, um, requested of you? With a, a bit of a look of concern. As they ask. We're investigating some super dangerous horrible places that you are unable to do it because you're not as cool as us well are you privy to i'm just kind of <laughs> just ignoring that comment are you familiar with the, the the goings on of the things in the headquarters and the scouting missions that have been sent out um, i take it you're part of the scouting regiment yourself so you must be privy to some information Oh, yes, I am. Um, they'll, uh, when, yeah, when, when Chester makes that comment, they, uh, you see their, like, their, like, jaw muscles flex, right? Like, they're, you know, like, they're holding back, uh, you know. He's really, ups or they're really upset that we're so much cooler than they are. Um... I'll say, is it... Usual for outsiders to be tossed with such things around here. I mean, when they've displayed the ability to handle what they are being uh, asked of, um, I, I do not take issue that you are uh, chosen to complete a task. Um, my issue is with the task itself. Um, why is that? Um, sorry, 
they you can tell that they really want to say something um but they are stopping uh themselves from kind of uh verbalizing it um Well, what's wrong? Cat got your tongue? I assume that Agent told you how things work, right? The first to clear, first to to choose and all that. Um Yes, they uh, they have. Well It's just that a number uh have been tasked with the exact task that you uh have been given and uh, well they've all perished in their attempts. Uh, yeah, it was, sucks to be them. I myself told Adrian that we can't. We can't. We just have to leave this location alone. I mean, it's it's not worth it. Um, from what I understand and have been to what we've been told, there are, could be quite a few. Powerful artifacts that could be beneficial to, to both us as a group, of course, but also to any remnants that are that could help sanctuary. They just kind of you can tell that they have like a, a deep disagreement with what you're saying, um, but they aren't. Uh, they kind of recognize their surroundings, and this is probably not the. Uh, they're gonna look around and just reckon on well. Then I guess you are up for the task. Um, um but just as uh, as uh, perhaps um, another small favor to ask, because you're very familiar with the the train, and uh, as the sun is setting out, and we've got to look around for a bit of a more uh, shaded area, or at least a, a little, little less busy, and taking out the the badly drawn map. Perhaps you could could help us by by filling in some more details on uh, on the locations and what we might might encounter this is of course we, we an unprepared party it might just be in for disaster and um, as an experienced scout yourself you could probably um, maybe improve on 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 a few details on the map um Roll me a perception check here, because uh, I'll lean forward, and they they will look to add a couple of details to the map. Um, but I want to see if we had noticed something. Nope. Okay. Um, they'll just kind of lean forward and uh, add in a few details uh, onto the map. Um, you want to, you know, kind of take this route and uh, kind of as they draw it out. Um, That'll be the uh, best way to get where you need to go. And, uh... Yeah. Your friends certainly think that they are uh, up for the task at hand, so... Uh, We're, like, doing muscle poses in the background. Yeah. I guess it's, uh... Yeah. You'll finish it out, and, uh, we'll see. Um when you uh return with a uh, a job successfully done as they say back in in the countries summer shows and summer grows mm. oh. best of luck she's very uh they are very um Obviously, very kind of rigid uh, in this uh, conversation, especially after filling in more details. Um, they don't look like they are um, it's just gonna pleased by any means. Yeah. Go and ahead. Be like, uh, sort of put his hand on their shoulder and be like, if it eases your mind. 
don't be too mad at your dear old leader. Uh, we asked for this. Hmm. We wanted something hard. <laughs> this is kind of nod. Well then, ask and you shall receive. So, uh, best of luck in your uh, travels and encounters. I hope that they are worth the cost. As as do I. Thank you very much for the help you have provided, and um, I hope it will be sufficient to to make this into a, a success. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that, um, there'll be uh, uh, they'll uh, kind of make a motion that seems to catch uh, somebody's attention and uh, the uh, the built-in kind of drawbridge will start to low um, to lower uh, opening up the red vivarium uh, to you all uh, and uh, yeah, Larry will just kind of you know take a more uh, almost like a, a guard position right just kind of you know standing there and seeing uh, you all out um, they do not follow so, as the five of you exit, um, as soon as you're off of the, the drawbridge itself, it'll immediately start to kind of crank and uh, lift back up into position. And uh, as soon as it kind of shuts, it is just the five of you kind of left alone out here. Um, even if you were to look back and kind of take a, a look at the sanctuary um, to kind of get some sort of, you know, anything, uh, it would just look massive trees to you completely hidden you don't hear anything you don't hear the bustling sound of uh, a village uh, hidden amongst the trees um you don't hear people uh, you don't hear and you can't spot anybody you know that would be on watch or uh, keeping eyes so uh almost in a sense to go from like this bustling village to an immediate feeling of uh isolation as the five of you kind of essentially stand alone here Perhaps just uh, giving a little nod to to Mac and Cheese to to point back at the fort. Maybe you two can can leave a little mark so it will be easier to spot in the, in the future. You know. Kelsey's glory Chester was here in one of the trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Just, yeah. Carved in. Um, like that? <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect. So, um, having heard all it's this, it's like on the it's like on the drawbridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the drawbridge exactly. Uh, having heard all of this, uh, Nick, uh, kind of being a bit forewarned about the path forward, having heard, you know, like especially don't go down, you know, the into like the small valley that, uh where the location that you're going to um there's been a lot of uh without you know having to make any type of check or anything right there's been a lot of uh, warnings against uh, the path you currently take um how is nick's feeling about just kind of like uh having been told so many times uh, to potentially kind of you know steer clear uh nick's is a bit anxious about this um Though he's trying to put on a brave face, he's just knows that the other people are going to go in there, and well, he's trying to help them get back alive. Uh, All right. Maybe find something along the way, but um... fair enough. A little, little reserved about going in there. Um, especially running out in front. He has very little intention of charging in. Fair enough. Absolutely. That in mind, with the idea of, you know, uh, having not entirely, but enough revealed your state uh, Chester to Hoot, a uh, long time 
uh, friend and uh, acquaintance, um, uh, Dorina. Uh, you are in particular looking for something that would return the senses to you know somebody who had lost them at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what? How are you feeling about the uh, the path forward? Because it seemed, uh, at the very least, that. Chester and Mac were uh, interested in something quite similar to what you may be looking for. I mean, as long as she feels like other people are willing to go in the same direction, she will go along, but she's... Ultimately, if it gets too scary, it's just something for taste, so she isn't... She isn't uh, extremely worried. Fair enough. All right. So, with that, with a crude map available to you, uh, the five of you start to uh, make your way away from Sanctuary and back into the uh, treacherous depths of the Red Vivarium. And if we could, uh, Hoot, I guess, because you've got lead on the map, although you are free to share with anybody else, uh, in order to make a survival check as far as how well you're able to follow along to the intention laid behind this map. I guess he's gotten used to, to having to walk up front, so he'll do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's got the compass. Uh, does the bit, right? map add any circumstantial bonus? Uh, I would say it would add a plus two to the circumstantial bonus. And the uh, and the compass is survival as well, right? Does that does that stack? Uh, what stack? I. Hmm. I think technically you would just you would get the just larger of the two. Yeah. yeah I think that's okay, how it works. So t- yeah. Okay. Circumstance. Yeah, I can I can double check it, but I. I... Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Because the the, is it. <laughs> Is it specific that Good the uh, is it specific that the the compass offers uh, a circumstantial bonus, or does it say just a bonus too? Do you have the uh, uh, item in your uh, it's, it's more without one you usually Helps take direction. a penalty. Without one you usually take a penalty. Oh, okay, let's take a read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, without yeah. a compass. Oh, okay. So Fair the enough. so the no. compass brings it back up two points. So basically, like baseline roll. Okay. Yeah. So whatever yeah. your survival check would be. Plus, okay. So, yeah. uh, but an unnatural one. Yes. Uh, you are very confident. This is the way you need to be going. And um, <laughs> easily enough, you kind of mark it down on the map. And you look with the compass. <laughs> you turn. Um, uh, right. This is the way that needs to be going. And you are 100% certain about this being the direction that you have to go. And all is well. Uh, you start to make, uh, you start to kind of lead the group that way, seeing as how you've got the compass, you've got the map, and uh, potentially you apparently have these skills um, required as far as uh, leading the group forward. Uh, I'm gonna say, hmm, uh, <laughs> because the, yeah, I think this, I think this is deserving of a. Um, perception check from everybody else except for Hoot in this moment. Yeah, thanks for getting us lost, Hoot. Thanks for taking my compass. Shouldn't have distracted me. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Wow. There we go. Um, Jesus, Wait, everybody. So oh, t- <laughs> up until Nick's the guy without a compass. Really trust you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same hey, one again. He's got my compass, you know? Yeah, same one again. The, the 23 yeah. on both. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, they are just really good at rolling the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. It becomes apparent, particularly to Mac, Dorina, and Chester, uh, that. It seems like Hoot is heading the exact direction that you came from. Um, and you know what the path was. You know there were spiders, you know there was the, the single building. Considering the way that Hoot is leading, you get the feeling that there's a chance that he read the 
the map and the compass wrong um, because it seems like he's going to lead you back on a path that you've already traveled. Um, but I'm not sure how much you can, you know, how much you just trust who has the right thing, but it, at least for a moment, it, um, it, uh, it occurs to you like, well, wait a minute. I think that's the way we came. And actually, I would say it's a thought, like a maybe for Mac and Cheese, but uh, for Darina, you know for a fact that that is the way that you came from. Um, I think then I would try to, like, you know, extremely politely and quietly just bump an elbow into him and quietly whisper, like, are you quite, quite sure this is all correct? It seems, you know, the polar opposite of the direction we should be heading. Just, you know, very quietly as to not embarrass anyone. <laughs> Keeping <laughs> boots pride intact. Um, yeah. Like like when somebody's pants are open and you just want to, you know, low-key in front of them. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I think he'll, uh, he'll, he'll take the map and then turn it around a couple of times. And well, I don't know if that's natural one, if he would notice that it's actually uh, just the, the, the wrong way around. <laughs> I would say you pr you still feel very confident in your chosen direction. With the natural one having been pointed out, you're like stubbornly accepting of the direction you've chosen. Yeah, I definitely think this is the way we we should be heading. If I if I read this map right, but the map was crudely drawn, but the the compass is definitely right. We we should be heading this way. It's it's pointing towards the E. If you see, I'm most certain that we have, we've come across this before. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Oh well, unless you are the one who knows how to navigate better, so I shall trust your judgement. <laughs> Fuck. What is people like? a hill to die on? We could also split the difference, I guess, and the head to, to, for a middle ground. Head these are guaranteed wrong way, you mean? <laughs> well, uh, well. <laughs> Romy, uh, Romy, Romy, you think it's left? You, you been... think it's right? Let's go straight. Yeah. How many years have you been navigating Hoot? Mm, about 25. Lots of years. Mm. Um, Hood, if you could, go ahead and roll me another survival check, but, um, the DC on this is obviously much higher. Um, but you're like, okay, let, let's, you know, let's give it a second look. Let's see, just in case. <laughs> uh, with a 13, uh, nah, you've got the right way. No. We're definitely, definitely this way. Like my years of experience are telling me that we, we, that it's this way. Um, so are we coming closer to the spider trap? <laughs> yeah, I mean you're you're slowly heading that way for sure. <laughs> like, like, do we see the spider trap? No, I would say you're not that close yet because it, it does. It's going to take a little bit to get that way, but um. At the very least, for sure, Darina knows you're getting closer to the spider traps. Uh, and Mac and Cheese have a very um, strong sense that you might be heading back towards the spider trap. Like, hey, I know I've seen that tree before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're starting to get the same, like, wait a minute. Like, this is all a little bit too familiar. You're starting to... I mean, Dorina's done it quietly. Um, so, like, up ahead, Dorina and, uh, and Hoot are kind of, like, you know, talking to each other, but a bit more, um, uh, a bit more, like, privately. Uh, so maybe the two of you don't hear what they're speaking about, um, but, uh, Mac and Cheese are definitely getting the feeling, like, wait a minute, we're... this is... we're going back the way we came, what the hell, you know? It's not very smart, is he? Not at all. And Max just gonna stop walking. <laughs> just stop. Alright, I'm back. And then... Yeah, you he, stop. Yeah. He's gonna call out to Hoot and be like, Hey, are you sure you know how to read this compass? 
I've been reading this with compasses for longer than you've been alive, so do you need a piggyback or something? We really need to go this way. Uh, I swear I know this tree. Like, I swear I got... Like, I know this tree. <laughs> We've been this way. Oh, how much money do you have? Enough. How about... If we're going the wrong way, you give me all of it. Hmm. No, I've never been one to gamble away all my money, but, but I'll, it's not I'll gambling to... if you're so confident. It's quite a dense forest. There's always a certain aspect of gamble to it. So you're not that and it's 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 a crudely drawn map. And this it, it, just look at it. it it's, it's charcoal. Like it, it, either one of you could have drawn it, but I'm sure it's this way. Then give me all your money, and I'll give it back to you <laughs> for the right location. Okay, fine. <laughs> Can Mac just like take the map? <laughs> Sure, yeah, you reach out, you know, just snatch it out of his hands, like, what the fuck are you doing, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just taking all of his money. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> As Hoot is distracted, handing over all of the, 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 the coin uh, pouch to, uh, to Chester, uh, you take the opportunity, Mac, and you just snatch it out of, um, you snatch the map out of uh, Hoot's hands. Uh, As you take a look at it, go ahead and roll me a survival check. <laughs> Uh, I guess with a negative negative two, but uh, so it'd be like a twelve. So it'd be like a twelve. Um, sorry, I already pressed roll when you, when you said the negative. Two. It's all good. It's all good. Um, well, I'm thinking because of the the whole compass shit, right? Um, but I, I assume you'll just take that with him. It's, it's kind of stupid to assume yeah. otherwise. Um, but um, Mac is very aware that they're going the wrong direction yeah too, exactly so. exactly yeah so um absolutely you, you take it from him and uh you clearly see where hoot had got it wrong right uh you were heading the wrong direction without a doubt um and uh he's gonna yeah. like turn the map the other direction like who had it upside down yeah like who <laughs> who had done that but he'd done it like too quick to recognize where the you know the uh the uh <laughs> the um, the kind of uh, the direction it, it should have posed. Um, so yeah, like you kind of see it clearly as you turn it, and like no way. Uh, and then the direct east route that you were heading, right? Um, that uh, Hoot was suggesting is way off. You're, you're basically going the exact wrong direction. Uh, you were you were taking <laughs> steps further away from your your location, or your intended uh, location. Yeah, so you just turn right around and you start to walk away into the right direction. Oh shit. Uh, one second. Sorry, uh, Discord dropped out for me. Um, so you turn and start to make your way, uh, the, the appropriate direction. Yeah, and, uh, then he complained that we map. But that he was looking at it upside down. Fair enough. All right. Um, perfect. So yeah, uh, you recognize that uh, Hoot certainly got something wrong. Whether it was a mix of both, uh, misreading the compass momentarily. Uh, you know, maybe the eyesight is going a little bit, Hoot. Um, you know, as you age, uh, or uh, <laughs> or uh, the map itself. You just had it kind of. Both things in conjunction were going right. You know, both things were telling you the wrong direction. Uh, but, Mac, you've got it right. And so, uh, despite not being um, the most uh, navigational, like, you know, lead, you've never uh, done too, too much of it. But at the very least, you know, you know the basics. Uh, and so, you quickly turn the group around and uh, start to insist on the appropriate direction. Uh, at, at the very least, you, you assume and know it to be the appropriate direction. So, 
the group is going to see us pass by the, the forest, like the camp again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they the are. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. like, um, <laughs> these guys okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to walk by. Uh, I mean, again, nobody, you can't see anybody else, so you, but you know that there are eyes on you at the very least. Uh, I'm using watch that you. ghillie cloak to, to stealth my way now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, keep your head down. Uh, hide your shame. No, um, but in any case, yeah, you you go one direction and you realize you know the group kind of stops. Mac, you realize that you're heading the wrong, and so you turn back around. And as you uh, return, you're going right past the uh, the exit that you've had. So right on the wall is you know Chester was here, right? Um, and so you have to pass uh, the inscription that you made in the in the wood and start to head the appropriate just, direction. Just just gonna add again. Yeah, again. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, walking past it, you know, uh, giving it a quick update before uh, continuing on. So, finally on the right direction, uh, leading the group uh, back, right, for the first time. Uh, as you take lead now, you are the navigator now. Um, and so, you start to make your way uh, into the Red Bavarian. Red. Yeah, into the Red. And so... Uh, I think then that this is the uh, best place to stop for now and pick up next time as you look to arrive at uh, the location that you have been requested, or rather, you have requested yourselves to uh, take a look into um, the would be uh, in its time hospital of the Red Vivarium. And so, thank you all for playing. Uh, definitely. Fun to get one in. Uh, looking forward to next session as we start to... Uh, we're getting close. It's session six now. So I think... Yeah, I think we're looking at probably two to three max sessions. Um, and we will be wrapping up this campaign. So uh, thank you all for playing. I want to go ahead and sign out on the stream and stuff. But I'll be back in just one moment. So appreciate you. And one sec. Okay. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you all for hanging out as we conclude uh, session six of Into the Red, our Wednesday campaign. Uh, as I said in the final moments, uh, we are going to be wrapping this one up here shortly. So um, in the coming weeks, um, you know, the next two, uh, potentially even one. Who knows? Uh, who knows how the next session goes? But in uh, either way, thank you all for watching and hanging out. Uh, we will be back on Friday for the uh, community world building stream and kind of hang out. Uh, if you'd like to get involved in the community or, um, uh, yeah, or, you know, if you'd like to get involved in the community, um, either to, you know, participate in the world building threads and stuff like that, uh, or potentially have the opportunity to join, uh, a future game, the best place to be is in the discord. So if you'd like, we'd love to have you. Um, we've got a, uh, growing and very, I would say fun, uh, community. So, you know, if you'd like to get involved, we'd be happy to have you. Um, in any case, uh. Maybe we'll see you Friday. Uh, if not, our next uh, campaign uh, will be, campaign session I should say, will be on Saturday as we have uh, session six of our Saturday campaign, uh, Dead Waters. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have a good day or a good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And I uh, wish you all the best and uh, maybe we'll see you next time. Peace on out. Later, guys.